I've always wanted to write. Um, and though I work in books and am a, pu a book publicist and love what I do, my first love was writing, not reading. Caitlin Hamilton Summy has been in love with the writer's craft almost as long as she can remember. She earned her master's in fine arts from Colorado State University, worked as a receptionist in the editorial department for a Knopf imprint, and then began a career as a publicist, partnering with her husband to create a firm that showcases the work of other authors. In 2017, she published a well-regarded collection of short stories that percolated from within her mind over a number of years. To Lay to Rest Our Ghosts drew praise from author Peter Gaillet, who wrote, It's been a long time since I read a collection of stories that amazed me from cover to cover. This month, she released Geographies of the Heart, an epic tale that New York Times bestselling author Beth Hoffman calls a tender yet powerful journey where bitterness gives way to the determination it takes to stitch lives back together. And I began when I was a small, small child. I was about three or four, according to my mother, uh, when I presented her with a story that was entirely scribbles and asked her to read it. And she very wisely asked me to read it to her because I didn't even know letters at that time. So I've always wanted to write. And then as I grew up and, and was looking for a career, words and reading and publishing just made great sense. How long did that first book take to create? To Lay to Rest Our Ghosts took about 25 years um, from beginning to publication. Um, and there were whole years during that time that I never wrote. Um, I was working, I'm a mom. Um, so it was 25 years of putting it together piece by piece. Many of the stories were written when I was in my MFA program at Colorado State. Um, and then two stories were written much later um, after I became um, busy with my professional career and as a mother. Um, and then Fomite, Mark Estrin at Fomite asked if I had a book. He realized that I had been writing stories and wanted to know if I had a book. And so after initially telling him no, um, a year later I decided, why not? Why not see? Why not go for it? And I put um, all my stories out and looked at them and decided I had 10 I thought would make um, a good collection. And I sent them off and he accepted the book. It was very exciting. After undergrad, you got a job in the publishing industry, but then you left to go back and get an MFA. Why? Um, I wanted to have that degree, and I wanted to give myself two to three years just to write. I knew once I became enmeshed deeply in a career that I, it would be hard for me to leave. So when I realized that publishing wasn't working for me, it seemed the perfect time to try for an MFA. And the reason publishing wasn't working for me was that I was working in editorial, and I don't think it was a best fit for me. Um, I don't think um, that I am the best person to help others shape their work, to shape their stories. Um, at the time I was in publishing at Random House, I was an editorial assistant, but also the imprint receptionist, the division receptionist. And I think that publicity, when I came back into publishing and chose publicity, um, made more sense for me. I loved greeting people and saying hello and chatting with people. And I am not necessarily the best at helping people shape a story, but I am happy and good at telling people why a story matters. So um, post MFA, I stumbled into a publicity and marketing job and it was perfect for me. I love it. As a publicist who knows how to write, are you ever tempted to get involved in the editing process? I think shaping your own story is easier than helping somebody else shape theirs. I think when you are guiding somebody through a manuscript, you have to have a real sense of both the said and the unsaid. Um, you have to be able to help a writer 
um, who says they want to do X, Y, and Z with a manuscript. But I think you also have to sort of intuit some things they may not be able to articulate clearly. Um, you have to understand their vision. And I think sometimes that requires a, a, a different kind of perceptiveness. Um, so I think that there are others who are more gifted that way. Whereas when I'm writing my own work, I know what I want to achieve. I know what I hope for it. Um, so it's pretty easy for me to guide myself. Geographies of the Heart is a fascinating read. And every time I pick up a book by an author I'm going to interview, I wonder if there's an autobiographical element to the story. Geographies of the Heart is fiction. It is largely imagined. I don't have a sister. My grandmother was really sweet, um, not sharp and biting like the character Catherine, the grandmother in, in Geographies of the Heart. So I think that um, to say this is autobiographical isn't correct. Are there threads that are reflective of my life moments? Absolutely. Um, I did grow up in a multi-generational house. Um, but I, I write when I hear a line. I write when I hear a voice. And so then I have to write my way toward that character and discover what his or her problem is. Sometimes as I'm doing that, I, I'll pull in a thread or I'll, I'll, I'll see something pop up and I'll think, oh, that's, that's like the note from, from a family song, you know. But, but this, is, this is fiction. And, um, and that's the fun, that you can do something and, and create something and um, imagine a whole world. That's the beauty of writing fiction. I do feel, though, um, and I like to talk about this sometimes um, with, with writers or others. I've mentioned it at a few events. I do think that the book is emotionally true. And I think that's what matters most to me. I feel that what the characters are experiencing, how they're reacting is true to what they would do in, in these circumstances, to, true to what other people might do in these circumstances. And I think, um, hope that others will agree that it reflects an emotional truth. A central thread throughout the story is forgiveness. Why is forgiveness so hard? I think forgiveness is hard for people, maybe, because we're not taught how to forgive. We're told to forgive one another. We're told to let things go. But if you've been deeply hurt by someone or deeply disappointed by someone's actions, how to let go, how to forgive, can take time for each individual person to achieve. I think. I mean, that's a tough question, Terry, because nobody has asked me that before. But I think that the forgiveness in this novel um, comes after great time because uh, these two sisters don't know how to communicate with one another, um, don't fully understand each other, um, and therefore don't really know what the problems are, where the pain is all coming from exactly, and exactly how to forgive. So I just think it's a, um, a personal process. Maybe forgiveness can't be taught, but um, I do think it is a process. Of, of absorbing the pain, understanding the pain, and then letting the pain go, finding a way to move on. And that's not always easy for people, and a lot of people don't know how to do those things. I think we have to teach ourselves. Is Geographies of the Heart plot-driven or character-driven? My characters always guide me because I start with just a voice or a line or a phrase and I have no idea where I'm going. It's one reason it takes me forever to finish a book because I'm, I'm writing my way toward the story and the conflict. Um, but at a certain point I know these people, I know them very well and I know what would be true to them, honest um, to them. So I know if something they might decide to do in a draft isn't really 
what they would do. It isn't really honest uh, to who they are. So, yes, my characters do guide me quite a bit. One of the things I enjoyed most about Geographies of the Heart was the dialogue. You have a great gift for bringing characters to life through conversation. How'd you learn to do that? Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't know how I learned to do dialogue or um, address dialogue. The one concrete thing I remember is not um, wanting to use too many different kinds of dialogue tags, as I call them. You know, he replied, she said, he yelled. I pretty much just keep it to said. Um, he or she or they said. Um, but I, I think it comes back to writing what I hear. Um, and so I think that's uh, how I approach dialogue. It's, it's what I hear, it's what I would, I would say if I were in that situation. So, um, but I don't know that I've really studied dialogue. Um, but I appreciate so much that you thought it was effective. Thank you. The reviews are great. The feedback from readers is very good. What's next? I don't know what's next. I'm not sure um, anything new is next. I guess it depends on whether or not I hear a line or a phrase or, or some kind of voice. I do have a picture book that's completed and edited. I'd love to place it. I do have a middle grade novel that I've been working on for about 11 years, and I, I'd really... I, I guess if I do anything, I'd go back to that and try and take it through another edit or two and, and place it. But as for something new, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe nothing. Um, I think for right now, I just want to do other things. I want to live my life. I want to paint my house and fix up the yard. So we'll see. Not all writers come to the craft with the determination to create a canon. Will Geographies of the Heart be Caitlin Hamilton Summey's first and last novel? Only time will tell. But take some time to enter the Macmillan's world, and you'll find a fulfilling tale that may conjure hope that she will, in fact, have more stories to tell. I'm Terry Shepard for Authors on the Air, and I'll see you in the next chapter.